skeletal muscle, the insulin resistance hub. This is Dr. Jeetan Bendor for Physician Perspectives. Let me begin by giving insulin the credit it deserves. This fantastic hormone controls fuel and therefore controls energy. So it is central to our existence. Insulin is super important. So let's define insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, initially proposed to describe patients with diabetes requiring high doses of insulin, is currently defined as decreased responsiveness or decreased sensitivity to metabolic actions of insulin, such as insulin-mediated glucose disposal of muscle and adipose tissue and inhibition of gluconeogenesis in the liver. So you have three characters here important, muscle, adipose tissue and the liver. We need to understand that there are two characters really when it comes to insulin resistance. There is hyperinsulinemia, that is an increased amount of insulin in blood and tissue and insulin resistance. So cells, pretty much every cell, responds to both hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. We also have to understand that insulin resistance is a cell-specific phenomena, which means that every cell will react to this insulin challenge in a very different way. Why is insulin resistance so important, you may ask? That's because it affects pretty much every organ in the body, the heart, the arterial system, fat cells, obesity is a huge problem these days, type 2 diabetes another big problem, centrally an insulin resistance challenge, MAFLD, metabolic associated fatty liver disease, central nervous system challenges, Alzheimer's is now called type 3 diabetes, cancer, kidney problems rather, and gynecological problems to name a few. Three important characters as I mentioned earlier, skeletal muscle, liver and adipocytes. So the role of insulin in glucose homeostasis is represented by the direct effect of insulin on these three characters, skeletal muscle, liver and adipocytes. These tissue require naturally insulin specific signaling pathways. In the skeletal muscle, a representative rather of insulin acting tissue, that is why it is very important to talk about it, insulin promotes glucose utilization and storage by increasing glucose transport and net glycogen synthesis. In the liver, insulin activates glycogen synthesis, increases adipogenic gene expression and inhibits gluconeogenesis by decreasing gluconeogenic gene expression. Now, in the white adipose tissue, insulin inhibits lipolysis and increases glucose transport and adipogenesis. So the whole balance of trying to get this glucose away from the blood and, and its challenges is to take that glucose and make it into uh, a, a storage forms of glycogen or fat. Please allow me to say this, like every other organ, the skeletal muscle is multifunctional, but it is also a super faceted uh, organ or a tissue. And it's so important to understand that skeletal muscle is very central to glucose homeostasis as it is central to other things it does, including mobility. Why is insulin resistance in skeletal muscle important? Let's look at this landmark study published in 2009. Skeletal muscle insulin resistance is the primary defect in type 2 diabetes. The authors go on to say that although beta cell failure is the sine qua non for development of type 2 diabetes, skeletal muscle insulin resistance is considered to be the initiating or primary defect that is evident decades before beta cell failure and overt hyperglycemia develops. Here's a paper published in 2021, Role of Skeletal Muscle in Insulin Resistance and Glucose Uptake. Important take-home message. Skeletal muscle is essential for glucose clearance and is responsible for over 80% of glucose uptake from a meal or a glucose load. 
eighty percent. That is a magic number. That is eighty percent of the glucose from your food goes into the skeletal muscle. That is why it is important to remember that skeletal muscle insulin resistance can appear decades before the onset of beta cell failure and symptomatic type two diabetes mellitus. So eighty percent of blood glucose is taken up by the skeletal muscle because it is pretty much the largest organ in the body and the largest kitchen sink when it comes to glucose. But why do I say it's under our control? Now you cannot increase the size of your liver. You cannot increase the size of your fat. I mean it's not voluntary under our control. But we can certainly increase the size of a skeletal muscle and improve its quality by simple exercises and protein intake. So what does it take to make the skeletal muscle become insulin resistant? Two important things in my opinion. A continuous overload of glucose. The skeletal muscle also has a breaking point when it comes to managing excess glucose so there is always hyper hyper insulinemia rather to bring down that glucose and the second most important thing i feel is sarcopenia or what i would like to call hyposarcosis where there is low muscle mass and dynapenia that is low muscle strength so overload of glucose hyposarcosis and dynapenia an interesting illustration from this paper, molecular aspects of glucose homeostasis in skeletal muscle, a focus on the molecular mechanisms of insulin resistance. Three important characters here, insulin receptor itself, which gets tyrosine phosphorylated, of course. And then you have glycogenesis, that is formation or synthesis of glycogen. And the glucose uptake receptor, the GLUT4, a GLUT4 receptor, so a GLUT4 translocation process. So one can expect problems if you have challenges with the formation of or maintenance of these three characters. So insulin has several actions in the skeletal muscle, which is the paramount tissue determining glycemia. First of all, it has to get itself into the skeletal muscle, so it has to increase the blood flow into the skeletal muscle and increase the absorption or passing through of insulin via the endothelium into the muscle. And once it gets into the muscle, it has to get into the receptor and as I had mentioned earlier, GLUT4 receptor and uh, glycogenesis. Here are four important contributors or environments for muscle insulin resistance. One, insulin signaling defects, a challenge at the receptor itself because of diminished tyrosine phosphorylation of the receptor. Second is contribution by lipid metabolites, the intramyocellular accumulation of lipids of fat, this accumulation of fat in the muscle itself, which causes negative feedback on insulin signaling in the skeletal muscle. Third, contribution by oxidative stress. So obesity linked insulin resistance, which is always almost always there rather, increases lipid or fat influx into muscle cells, which, ex which is in excess of the capacity of the skeletal muscle to oxidize it. Of course, there is an increase in ROS levels or reactive oxygen species levels within muscles, skeletal muscle cells. Fourth, contribution by inflammation. The excess adipose tissue of fat accumulation in the muscle cells skew immune cells residing in the skeletal muscle towards pro-inflammatory phenotypes. So to recap, the four contributors when it comes to muscle skeletal muscle insulin resistance are one, insulin signaling defects, two, lipid metabolites, three, oxidative stress, and four, inflammation. The authors go on to say that it is unlikely that a single defect causes skeletal muscle insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Therefore, targeting individual factors may be insufficient to improve metabolic regulation in type 2 diabetes mellitus and a multimodal approach may be more successful to relieve muscle insulin resistance. A very important 
take home message irrespective of the strategy to reduce insulin resistance given the central role of skeletal muscle as the primary site of dietary glucose disposal relieving insulin resistance in this tissue will effectively improve whole body glucose homeostasis in metabolic disease thank you